Hello, hello. Today we're going to have a look at this uh, nifty little calculator, the E uh, Evka NK NK one hundred and sixty ENKA one hundred and sixty. I'm I'm pretty sure it still works. I'm pretty sure it works. Yep, yep. Oh yeah. Um. Uh. What am I going to add? Boom! Yeah, there we go. Yeah, it definitely, definitely works, and it looks really nice. Uh, but if you, get, if there's some eagle eyes amongst you, you may know uh, why this is sitting about. If you look really closely, you can actually see that the display in there. Well, it isn't actually a one single big vacuum fluorescent display. It's actually multiple tubes inside there. You can see that each of them are actually separate tubes and it's, um, well, it was just interesting. And obviously I'm just trying to fill up this, uh, still trying to fill up this uh, uh, display cabinet of, um, you know, random calculators and stuff. And I completely forgot that this was uh, about. So I'm really pleased and I was really clear, pleased when I, when I, came across it recently, uh, the other day. So what I'm gonna do is divided by zero. I can't do, doesn't let you do it. Doesn't let you divide by zero. Okay, well, what are you gonna do? But yeah, I figured we should have a little peek on the inside before it makes its way over to the display because yeah, it's uh, gonna be sitting with a couple of other uh, calculators. Also today, a couple of replacement power transistors have turned up for another calculator I'm working on that wasn't working at all. But right now that one's completely dismantled in the display area. But um, let's just have a look at what's going on in this one. So after a quick look on the internet, it's called, it's pronounced the Elka 160, and this is a 1970s uh, calculator, obviously. It's, it's such a nice color, like the color of that, like you cannot get a better color than an off kind of olive green for a calculator. But <laughs> let's have a peek on the inside. Oh no, the, okay, okay, it's all connected from the front, but wow, that looks really quite nice. As you can see, all of the legs uh, onto the VFD chips are uh, the heat shrunk. Uh, the, I guess these are IV, IV, ooh, IV4s? No, no, not IV4s. I can't remember which one. Well, I'll have a, look at, a closer look in a sec. I'll get the front cover off this thing first. When I dismantle these things, I've got uh, one uh, set of drawers that are uh, specifically made for each of these screws. So I make sure I never lose any of the screws for any of these things that are in dismantled displays. So... Uh, I just gotta make sure that I don't lose any of this stuff. Look how the switches are, they're not even membrane switches. The switches are literally like, the button pushes down and just makes a contact onto the actual, oh that is cool. I'm not gonna turn this upside down or it will literally all fall out. But that's what the switch looks like from the back. Pretty snazzy. So Sam, remember not to turn this upside down. <laughs> oh no, no, I just put it out of shot and I knocked it and they all twisted around. So as you can see from here, it's a lot more modern than the cal than the Nixie calculator that would be sitting next to it in the display. But uh, it's still, it's probably within the same decade. It's just a lot has changed. So this is a, instead of multiple logic chips, it's all broken down into a single chip. And there's a few transistors which uh, just drive the VFD tubes, but yeah, that's pretty cool. And I'm just trying to see if I can get a look at the back of the actual tube to double check which one they are. This, pla this black plastic part has actually been um, melted in place. So it's been put in and then melted along. So it's quite a permanent thing. Like a lot of these things, they're not, they weren't really made to be uh, repaired. So I'm just gonna try and see if I can poke one of them out. Oh, there's an interesting thing right here. There seems to be a connector on the back that connects over to a whole load of things. Maybe that's for testing it or something. That's quite interesting. So on the back, there's even a, where's the on switch? Where does we turn it on? Oh, we can't even turn it, can't even be turned on unless there's a connection between these two. Boom, there we go, we're on now. We're on again. So there's a voltage booster over here that's gonna boost the voltages because these uh, VFDs are 30 volts. They require 30 volts. So I've had a quick look and amazingly enough, all of the numbers are actually on the same uh, common connection. So this connection actually, it connects to this, which is zero, connects to this, which is one, connects to this, which is two, three, if you look, three, uh, it connects to four, it connects to five, connects to six, connects to nine, connects to eight and seven. So all of them, all of the numbers actually have a common contact. So, so if I connect this one together with others, it actually uh, runs through the numbers. 
So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to make this uh, select randomly uh, different um, points. And the way to do that is going to be quite simple. All I need to do is actually set a 555 chip uh, to sort of uh, write onto this. And then every so often, just send a, uh, a, cancel, a cancel command to this chip, which cancels it. So it doesn't, it does cancel it all the time. So what I need to do is just a, a random 5.5, five, five, a random oscillator that's gonna oscillate to that, and then a random oscillator that's just gonna cancel it every so often. That's all I need to do. Uh, the reason why this is making random numbers is because uh, this is the common pin. This one right here is the common pin bit all, between all the switches in the matrix. So you're not exactly choosing when you want to select a single number. So it's actually just choosing random amounts of numbers. And then this does a few random different things, so it might add some randomness to it. Actually, I'm gonna go one more step along on the laziness train, not even bother using analog or like logic to uh, do it. I'm just literally gonna use an Arduino, which I've gotta be honest, I've been shying away from using recently, but this one, just to get it done within a quite a, quite a quick means, and this might even add more functionality to it, potentially, maybe, probably not, because I'm just making it doing random things. So, so yeah, I'm just gonna wire in a, an Arduino to do the job. <laughs> potentially, I can fit this in the battery bay by the end of this all. All of these modifications are reversible, so um, the thing is, I don't wanna do anything too, like, drastic to the modification of it. I just wanna make it so it just shows some random stuff on the screen. So I think this is gonna be more than enough. Right, so I've made it big enough to actually pretty much fit into the battery bay in the display, so you won't even see the Arduino doing its uh, Arduino-y thing. It's just gonna be there just basically sending two oscillation pulses, one to the number, and then one that's gonna be about 10 times as slow, I guess, that will send a blip uh, to the to the cancel. Oh, in all of that, I managed to turn this upside down and knock out all of the numbers, so I may as well take them all out now. What a shame, what a crying shame. I, I, thankfully, I've got a picture. I've got the video to look back and put them in the right place. As you can see, I've already done it. It, it was surprisingly easy. This is all I'm gonna do. I'm just making the most of the random nature of uh, just misusing the switch matrix, basically. I've just realized that uh, the uh, cancel is on a random, uh, switch matrix as well, so I'm going to do that a few times just to increase its chances. So I'm just going to, I'm just programming it again in a in a computer out of shot, and boom, there we go. Now now it's going to do it does stuff. It it shows what the calculator can do basically. And now all I've done is basically having an oscillation. Well, actually, I've also added so underneath, you'll see. There are two diodes. Uh, the pink wire goes over to the common input of all of the uh, buttons that correlate to numbers. And then this diode goes in and correlates to the C, which is the cancel on the calculator, which just means, and then what I've done is I've set it so it says, press the cancel button once. So I've made it go high and low on the cancel once. And then, and then after that, every 100 milliseconds, it types in a random number because it's gonna be random because it doesn't know its, it's complete chance at which point in the switch matrix is switch matrixy thing that it, can, it selects a number. So now it's just a nice and random approach to it. Now, now this is the display for this calculator, completely reversible, but now you can see the calculator doing its calculator -y thing. I'm gonna lay this down so it looks like that. It will look like that in the display.
And now it is in its place, which is down here, which is a little bit sparse right now, but it's getting fuller and fuller. It's right next to this Unisonic 774, which I may very well do a very similar thing to. This one has a slightly larger VFD display, but it's still VFD tubes inside of it. But yeah, I think for a half an hour job, that's not that bad at all. It's uh, just displaying another VFD tube. The great thing about this is it starts working the second you turn this display cabinet on. So you don't need to turn it on and then do another thing. It's like everything here, the whole display is just a turn it on and it works kind of situation. There's nothing fancy about it that you need to worry about. So it's just a turn it on and forget about it. And yeah, I think it looks uh, looks pretty damn cool. And it is directly above all of the other VFD displays. So yeah, it's all it's all in keeping with the same, same vibe. There's a Nixie clock on top of here because this Nixie calculator is being a little bit awkward. And you may have seen earlier, I did show you some power capacitors that have turned up for me to try and get it up and running. And fingers crossed that'll be, that'll be another project pretty soon. So it's getting Getting much closer to crunch time. It's actually going to open. I promise. I know I've been talking for the last like nine months about it, but you know it's it's, it's only me putting it together. So it's taking a little while, but it's still very close. In fact, uh, I'm working right now on a video on this thing. Uh, it is a DIY modular synthesizer that's going to be in the interactive zone. I'm going to be talking about this and why uh, the synthesizer interactive zone is made of DIY synthesizers. The main reason is DIY synthesizers. Well, they're they're a lot easier to repair because and replace things because. You know, potentiometers are a little bit easier to find and stuff. They've got a bit more character than, um, you know, normal things, and they're they're less valuable if they get broken and stuff like that. So it's 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 just a bonus all round for using DIY synths because you know something like this. It doesn't exist anywhere else. So there's going to be a video on this over on the Look Mum No Computer channel in the next couple of days. So keep a look out for that. Anyway, that is the calculator. And there's going to be a few more calculator things. I'm really trying to make it as much possible, as much as possible, wired up and interactive and doing something here before it opens. But there's, uh, there's it's, uh, it's going to be basically just uh, the bare bones still. And as time goes on, I'm going to have to make sure more things are plugged in and more things are going and more things are working uh, right now. Yeah, there's just a there's just a number of things that, that it just takes a lot of time to do this. I really wasn't expecting it to take so long to make that kind of things. For instance, uh, since uh, the last update, uh, there's been a few things put in. I've been concentrating on I've been working on the camera room a little bit. Uh, there's a consoleizer, which is the LSDJ video synthesizer stuff isn't set up yet. Ugh. I'll put in that put on that big relay onto the telephone wall. There's going to be the uh, the rest of the relays on there as well, and there's going to be the relay sequencer sitting around there as well. Um, um, there's another wall that I'm planning out that's going to have a bunch of VFD games, like old school VFD games, literally bolted to the wall, and they're all going to be on and stuff. It's going to be, it's going to be right old fun. It's going to be fun. Anyway, if you want to support this kind of thing and support this kind of, the, the, the more support basically, the, the it all gets pumped into the museum and stuff. So if you want to do that, and you want to see extra content like live streams, uh, extra videos on this, that, and the other. In fact, I've been doing a lot of live streams recently. You may notice that I've sorted out the workshop uh, basically to prep for doing more live streams in this kind of angle and stuff. So if you're interested in that, go and check it out over on Patreon. And yeah, um, I'm Sam. Have a lovely time at the museum. Well, it will be open soon. So have a lovely one. Totally do.